close here, 902. Good morning. I'm Breeze. This is the, the MMA Breeze show. So I appreciate you you taking the time. I, I know you're you're a very important, busy guy, so I wouldn't dream of wasting your time. I'll just jump right in. Um, you know, you're somebody, you're very experienced in MMA, wrestling, combat sports. You know, you've you've made the leap from light or from middleweight to light heavyweight, and you fought both weight classes. So we have a pretty big fight coming up here as someone who's attempting to do the same thing with Israel Adesanya, but he's he's not doing it the way you did it. He's obviously leaving some weight off. He's going in, in his natural frame. You know, how do you, how do you view this approach compared to, you know, your approach where you both on put on some mass when you were going up a weight class? I'm, Would, I'm fascinated by it. I've never, I've never heard of this kind of an experiment before. Mine wasn't some kind of uh, you know, reinventing of the wheel. Anybody that I'd ever heard of that moved into a different weight class tried to grow into that weight class. It was step number one. Okay, geez, can I get big enough for this? All right, let me try. I better get started right now. I've never heard anybody. Wrestling, boxing, MMA, use just the, the sports of combat where they have a weigh-in. Say what Adesanya said, which is I don't want to change my physiology. I don't want to change my frame. Will I be smaller? Sure, I will. That's why it's called going up. And I'm interested in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it, it's definitely going to be an interesting fight. I know Jones just left. He's going up as well. That's a fight everybody wanted to see. With all the, the changing around, how plausible do you see that fight coming to fruition? Do you see it happening in the near future with, with all the mixing and matching going on? Jones versus Adesanya? Yeah, yeah. I don't think we can get that fight. I mean, if John Jones goes to heavyweight, actually does a heavyweight fight, regardless of consequence of outcome, but if he gets to about 240 pounds, like is what he is telling us he's going to try to weigh in for, I don't think we're coming back. I mean, there's a lot of moving mm -hmm. parts. First off, Izzy has to beat Blahovich, or the conversation is dead right there. And then second, Izzy has to call out John Jones. Now, if he if Izzy beats Blahovich, I think we could all bet that he is going to call out John, and then John's going to have to respond. But if he, if it's a simple matter of getting on a scale, and John Jones already weighs two thirty seven, two thirty eight, I don't think it would be even fair of us as fans, no matter how bad we want to see that fight. I don't know that that would even be fair of us to say, okay, John, stop, put the tape and rewind, take off all those pounds and all that hard work that you just put in for six months. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of those things where two oh five which is a perennial division, historically speaking, but because of John Jones had such a dominant champion, I think it's going to be a simple math as, do we have more fights for Izzy at 205 that we'd rather see or at 185? He's then going to have to pick and let one of the belts go. That's my guess. Yeah, I mean, that that's a big question, right, is what's going to happen to both these belts coming up? You know, Izzy's got to go up, but he's going to stay at the, the natural weight that he's been at. So what's the next step? You know, does he defend? Does he go up? I guess we'll have to wait. But, you know, John Jones, obviously, you know, he's uh, he's in the last few years, we've seen him a little wishy-washy in and out of it through the media. He's got his own personal hoopla going on and he comes back and he wins a fight and he's gone. And he wins a fight. And, you know, now we're at the point where his last two wins are controversial. So, I mean, how realistic do you think it is that Jones comes back, though, as the old Jones in heavyweight and makes another reign like he did um, like he has been doing in heavyweight. Do you really see him getting back on track or do you kind of think that his time's declining now? It's tough. That's a tough one because, yes, I, I am well aware and I see what you see, that John Jones is regressing and he's regressing quickly. However, there was such a gap between John and everyone else that John can get a lot worse and has been. He has been getting worse. It has been getting closer, but it hasn't closed that gap. He mm -hmm. still appears to be the guy. I like him at, two, at heavyweight in terms of the speed. I like him in terms of his uh, ability to push the pace. You know, for a guy whose own teammates say this guy doesn't show up to practice, John Jones sure shows up ready to go five rounds when he needs to. He's got a lot of heart, and some guys, some guys can just play, man. It's like a piano. They don't need training. They sit down, and they can just play. In the sport of MMA, John Jones can just play. And I like the idea of him at heavyweight. I disagree with John when John says about himself, I need to weigh 240. It's like, eh, John, I've, I've fought heavyweights, a lot of them, and I fought you and worked out with you when you were about two and a quarter. Man, that was a lot of man to deal with. You know, even yeah. Stipe Miocic is only uh, 230 right now, sometimes 231. So th those lighter heavyweights seem to be making that comeback. 
Um, I think John can step in and do it. Uh, I don't think there's any scenario where we see John Jones win three more fights. And I don't think there's any scenario where we see him compete five more times. That would be a, a very high cap for me. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he could walk right in there and, and go with the best of them for sure. Yeah, and you you brought up a, a great point there, you know, with uh, with weight. I think when we saw you and Bader and all these guys in the, the Bellator Grand Prix going from kind of fusing the light heavyweights and the heavyweights, and you see the light heavyweights are having a lot of success. Kind of, I, I wrestled in high school, and I remember, you know, a lot of times our 89-pounder would go up, <clears throat> excuse me, to heavyweight because we would call them fish. You know, a lot of the heavyweights weren't that athletic. So there's been a little bit of, you know, that that – that aura around the heavyweight division and John Jones is so athletic and, you know, and, and basically, you know, what we realized is from watching you guys that you don't necessarily need to put on a lot of weight. And maybe that's, maybe that's what Israel's seen in, in as well as you guys in the Bellator Grand Prix showing that, Hey, you know, this is old school martial arts, you know, with skill over size. Right. But I mean, I think at the end of the day, we can all agree that Jones is going to stay in the GOAT conversation when it's all said and done. He'll be there, as will DC and and mostly, if we're being honest, wrestlers. I mean, you look at Khabib, you look at uh, Henry Cejudo, uh, Chael P. Sonnen, all the GOATs come from wrestling. So, I mean, what what do you think as far as the future of MMA looks like with with MMA becoming so popular, mainstream, and wrestlers transitioning, do you see it getting more dominated by wrestlers, or do you think that it's kind of just evening out now? I, I feel like we're in a little bit of even out phase, but I do think that that high-level wrestler is still going to have a place. I think what some of the top wrestlers are finding, though, and Khabib might be a great example, is that you don't have to go to the Olympic Games. You don't even have to win a national championship. You just have to have a very good understanding of wrestling. If you were a top high school guy, even within your own city, that will do it in in mixed martial arts. Because getting up off the ground, using underhooks while you're on a butt, rotating hips, getting to your feet, I mean, that's very different than the ways you would stand up or Gramby or sit out roll in collegiate wrestling. So it's really the the positions have evened out. I, I don't think that I see a whole lot of wrestling moves done. The day of the single leg or even the day of the double leg, maybe the body lock comes in handy, but it's the pressure the ability to close that distance, have your hands on another man, push, pull, feel your heart rate about the pop of your chest and stay in there anyway. The ability to grind, the ability to cut weight. I mean, these are things that wrestlers know. And there used to be a time where one or two wrestling moves, it'd take you all the way to a championship, but that ended in about 1997, definitely by 2001. You had to know know some strikes. You had to have a level understanding and even a traditional belt uh, in the world of Brazilian jiu-jitsu where you just weren't going to make it. So I still think the wrestlers are going to be dominant. I think they're going to have a place. I think they're also going to learn that they don't need to get as high a level of wrestling. They're about 18, 19 years old. That usually when they're in their college or have a world in Olympic dreams, that's the time to start getting in the boxing gym and start smoothing those things out. You completely ran away with my next question. I love it because I was going to ask you, you know, we see so many wrestlers transition, some more successful than, than others. And I was going to ask you, you know, what, what is that, that factor that th- makes those wrestlers successful? If you were a coach of a team and you had, you know, 20 wrestlers and who would you pick to go to MMA and why? But I think you answered it there. It's that pressure that they, they bring. And I actually, uh, train a little bit at Jim Mo. I don't know how familiar you are with them, but that's where Impo is out of. Uh, Joe Salicki, um, Scott Holzman, um, and Chris Weidman has been popping in there lately. But there's a, a kid who's a pro, and he actually beat one of the guys on uh, Aljo's team, uh, Bazooka. And so he his name's Nick Rodriguez. And something that's crazy, he wrestled. I knew him from high school because our high schools wrestled against each other. But he um, he didn't go to college and wrestle. Just like you said, he afterwards, about 18, 19, he started fully diving into MMA. And to your point, the one thing that I, I hate going with him is his pressure. He just has a, a pace that I can't, that the people in the gym, the pros can't keep up with his pace and his pressure. And um, for me, you know, I think I talk with my brothers a lot about we're, we're all combat sports fans. But my older brother, he was saying, you know, look with jujitsu getting popular and, and mainstream and being on fight pass and with you and submission underground, everything you've done for the sport, you know, they're, they're getting so much more eyes on them. There's more money in it. <clears throat> and he thinks that the, the landscape of jujitsu is, is poised to change in the future with the wrestlers who are about to flood into it. I mean, if you go back to 1999, you know, Mark Kerr won ADCs twice at gold and absolute. And then you look at you competing in the finals with Craig Jones, Chris Weidman coming out. I mean, 
all these wrestlers just busting into the ADCC scene, uh, scene. Do you agree with that? That kind of perspective that, hey, look, over the next five to 10 years, you're going to see a whole lot more wrestlers in jujitsu as it starts to popularize. Yeah. Oh, I still think the wrestlers could win ADCC. As a matter of fact, one of the leaders of ADCC, which is a black belt in jujitsu, uh, did a piece after last ADCC to talk about the fact that there was no wrestlers that meddled and all of the medals went to jujitsu guys specifically in front of catch or in front of judo, some of the other grappling forms. And I even had to take the time and write him back. And it was a, a letter that was posted that, that 31 people saw it bombed, but I still had to take the time to write him back and just go, excuse me, wrestling was not represented at the ADCC. You did not allow us to put in a Tyron Woodley, a Ben Askren myself. And I was owed a match, by the way, I was their defending super fight champion. They owed me an invite back and I didn't get it. I just said, I mean, so just so we're clear for you to say that wrestling didn't dominate, but not to tell the rest of the story, which is you excluded us from the event. We still have guys right now with blue belts in jujitsu that could go in and win Abu Dhabi. But if they can't get the chance, then I got to just sit here and look like a fool. Yeah, uh, I totally agree with you. I think wrestling, personally, I'm biased. I, I wrestled, but I think wrestling's the best base. I mean, understanding, um, I think it was you I heard say, but it's not about submissions. It's about position, you know, and that's what wrestling is so good at teaching you. And I just feel like it's just the best to grow off of. We've seen so much success from it. Um, but, you know, I mean, I, I think personally, uh, you know, we watched Nicky Rod. He was what a blue belt when he made a, a splash on the scene. And so, I mean, I think personally, uh, it just shows in, in trial and error. If you're a wrestler and you really take jujitsu seriously for a little bit, it's going to be it's going to be a, a huge leap and a huge and a way easier transition from somebody else coming into the sport. And by but the way, by the way, when you bring up Nicky Rod, because that's a fine example when we we're talking about pressure and pace. He's one of those guys that's weaponized it. I mean, I, I watched the a tournament. I can't remember who all Nicky Rod ran into. I know Ronnie Marks was one of them, but he ran into a couple of guys and Nicky got him tired. Nicky just stayed in position. And you could tell these other guys knew a little more about the sport. Nicky was 22 at the time of this match, but Nicky wouldn't beat himself. He would not check out. He would not mentally beat himself. And, uh, you know, from combat sports, but that's a real thing. It's something hard to say to the audience. What do you mean to beat himself? Well, no, we, we know as athletes, there's ways out. And when your mind starts playing tricks on you, you find those ways out. I, and I feel with Nikki that he stays in there one way or the other, but he's going to be there all night long. Yeah. Yeah. His pressure is insane. It's been a freaking blast to watch him come up and that whole Donna here, uh, uh, death squad. They've been, they've been making, I mean, it's just a jujitsu scene right now. It's blowing up. People want to see it. Um, you saw, I'm sure Gordon Ryan, um, smack Andre the other night. So, I mean, that got, that got the whole, I what was that, that about? What so was that? What did he smack Andre? There was a video. I posted it on Twitter and it blew up uh, when I woke up. But basically, Andre got into his face backstage after the match and was just um, just yapping a little bit. It was kind of inaudible. I didn't really hear what he was saying. But then um, you could see Gordon was trying to walk away a little bit. And then he kept chirping behind him. So finally, Gordon, no, he said, why are you running? So Gordon turned around and said, said, why am I running? Why am I running? And just kept approaching him. And then they kind of bumped and Andre pushed him. And then Gordon uh, just smacked him like a like hard. And the video that I had, and I had all the angles, different videos. Um, um, what's his name? My brother's out of 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu now. He's training in California and uh, my twin brother. And he, um, one of the, the guys, Gio Martinez, uh, had one of the angles. Um, so I saw that. That was after. That was the big popular one where they came out from backstage and then they got into it. But the video from behind the stage is where, where Andre gets slapped. And also when the video pans down, you can hear another. So it's like you got to imagine you got smacked twice. But he's got fighting experience. So I think it's funny that, you know, one, Gordon was so confident. Obviously, he's the grappling whiz these days, but one that he was so confident to smack an actual fighter. And two, I was just, I was honestly surprised that Andre didn't, didn't do anything. You know, what I, I mean? was a little surprised too. I was a little surprised when I saw Andre start back and walking backwards, you're know, like trying to collect his hands. It, it didn't seem like the Andre that I knew. Um, mm -hmm. You said that all of that was because of chirpiness after the match. Whose match? Were those both, were those guys cornering somebody? I don't know what Andre was doing there. He didn't, he didn't uh, compete, 
but Gordon Ryan stepped in for his brother and uh, was against um, Robert uh, Jimenez, I believe his name is. And uh, so he, they competed. Uh, Gordon caught him in an arm bar. The first one, Robert scrambled out of the second one. Gordon um, broke his arm. And so he, uh, after that match, I guess he was getting ready for media. And um, that's when he got approached by Andre in the back. How, how long was it? You're talking about Jimenez. Did Jimenez get a, get some minutes in? Did he get some time? Um, yeah, he got, he got it. That was a little wrong, but I mean, Gordon made it look easy, man. He was, he, he, he posted a picture before the match and said, I am going to finish this one in a mounted uh, arm bar guys. And then he, he almost got him in a mounted arm bar the first time. Robert uh, rolled out of it. And then the second one, he started in the mount, fell to the side and finished it. I mean, it, it probably lasted, I can't remember, but it, it you know it was a decent length, I guess. Um, but Jimenez is good. Jimenez is really good. That's why he beat I, I Nicky Rod. Jimenez could go some, could, could get some minutes in with him. Yeah, yeah, I was very excited for it. I mean, because I know he beat uh, Nicky Rod. I think he dropped one to Craig Jones. Um, but he's he's game, man, and he's only getting better. He's a young kid. He's only twenty. Gordon's twenty five. So I was pumped on the matchup, but you know, Gordon. Uh, Gordon's just the, 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 the king right now. And that's why I'm excited to see, you know, because you watched him against Pat Downey and Pat Downey in, in, in wrestling just dogged him. So it's so funny, like, you know, how you can be so good at jujitsu and still in a wrestling match just be so oblivious to some of the things he was getting ripped by Pat Downey with. So um, that's why I'm really excited to see, you know, what happens over the next 10 years with these wrestlers and jujitsu and guys like you elevating the spotlight for jujitsu. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be a lot more a lot more people coming out of college wanting to do this. I feel like um, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I, I see the popularity growing as well, you know, and yeah. now there's places to compete. Now you can even go make money, see the world, get a plane ticket and get a few exactly. bucks. While you're doing it. Yes. I, I agree with you. Uh, Jiu-jitsu is going to take off. Absolutely. Um, so I know, I know, you know, I'd be remiss if we just talked to MMA. I'm glad we talked jujitsu. Um, and I, I, I'll let you get out of here after this, but I just wanted to end things on like a quick, I'm going to shoot some, some wrestling matchups at you. Okay. And I want you to like, with as little explanation as possible or no explanation, just give me the answer. And we're just going to roll through them who you think would win these matches. So, all right, first one's Cox and Snyder. Cox. Cox or Sag Live? Cox. Dake or Burroughs? Dake. Okay, Spencer Lee or Nick Siriano? Nicky Freestyle, baby. Come uh, on. <laughs> that's right. All right, Spencer Lee or uh, Dayton Fix? Fix. Okay, okay. Yanni or Zane? Yanni. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yanni or Jordan Oliver? Yanni. Yeah, yeah. One of my good uh, good friends, I got my dog from him. He's he's really close with Yanni. His brother grew up with Yanni um, wrestling. His brother's Brian Courtney. He wrestles at uh, UVA, and he's really close with Yanni. So um, I remember when Yanni was first coming out of high school, obviously very decorated. I told my buddy, I was like, man, I, I, and he knew more about Yanni than me by far, but I said, I think Yanni can uh, go straight to winning the whole thing right away. And it's funny because he was like, ah, and he knew Yanni personally. He's like, ah, I don't, I don't know about that. And then he, man, Yanni's been a stud, man. I'm very excited to see Yanni's future. All those guys you just said are studs. I mean, All of them. Bain and uh, J.O. J.O. used to coach Yanni for like a year. And so they just kind of figured him out. Yeah, you know, Yanni kind of was studying more than Dean studied. I think that that helped him. But, yes, I agree. All three of those guys are hammers. It's going to be hard to get through Zane. Zane just doesn't like to give up points to Americans. And Americans uh -huh. haven't gotten very good at figuring out how to score points on Zane. Uh -huh. I would pick who the guy's going to be. I would – I'd probably be smart to pick Zane, but uh, I'm pulling Yanni. Yeah, uh, I, I I would pull Yanni too. You know, I want to I want to ask – we talked about jujitsu um, and then I'll let you go at this, but we talked about jujitsu blowing up with, uh, with all the wrestlers in the future with its popularity. I personally believe wrestling in general is taking a, 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 a skyrocket in, in hype as far as, you know, the public eye goes, you know, obviously flow has made a huge impact o over the last few years. And then we have, uh, you know, all these other guys coming up track and all that stuff. Do you think wrestling in, in America, you know, we've, we've come up, you know, a little shy against the Russians, you know, so over the years. So, I mean, do you think with this glamorization of combat sports and including especially grappling, do you think that our, 
our USA wrestling is going to evolve in the next five to 10 years in, in general, because, you know, we're seeing all the beat the street events and everybody's staying active in, during season, after season, you know, in college, right after college. Do you think that in general, you know, that we're about to elevate our game with through this hype as well in wrestling and start to kind of compete with these guys on the world level, even though we are, but take gold against the, the Russians. Definitely. Oh yeah. We won the worlds just a couple of cycles ago and, mm -hmm. and we're always going to be right there in the top three where, you know, nobody's going to get around the Russians and their ability to cheat the drug testing systems. And that's just a straight across the board in all Russian sports. They do so well, but their government helps them to pull it off. That's less of a secret than it used to be, but that's still something that you're up against when you're putting clean athletes on the field or the court or the mountain or it's just one of those deals, but the U S I can't, I can't see a scenario where they fall out of the top three. You know, you're going to always have your problems with Iran. Cuba is always going to stand one or two guys that are going to bring medals. That's before you even get to the Ukrainians and the Azerbaijan. So, I, I mean, there's some very tough fields out there, but I really do feel that the U S is on the verge of sending its greatest team of all time. I mean, you're asking me who, mm -hmm. who's going to win between Cox and Snyder. Well, one's got, two world gold medals. The other's got a world and Olympic gold medal. And one of them has got to stay home. I mean, that's mm -hmm. as nasty as it gets. You, you got Dake who hasn't lost to a foreigner in three years versus Burroughs. Who's an Olympic five-time world champion. One of those guys has to stay home. But whenever you have these scenarios of iron on top of iron, I think it does speak a whole new level to the team and the U S man, they are on. And I'll tell you another weight class. that's getting a little bit overlooked, but that's heavyweight. If Nick gets out of the country and he's currently ranked number one to do so, he can win any color medal and he will win a medal. Mm -hmm. But then you've got this Mason Paris coming up and then you can never take your eye off of Gable. Mm -hmm. You can never take your eye off of Don Bradley, who's a junior world champion. And I'm not even sure of, of those who the best is because there's another kid at Penn State whose name I can't pronounce, Krofovich or something. He might be the best damn heavyweight of them all. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's madness right now. I've, I've been watching. Obviously, I, I'm addicted to flow and keeping and up with all the media. How do you say that? What is this heavyweight called? Krikovic? <laughs> I, I can't pronounce it. I don't know you what know it is. What I'm talking about. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Visual <laughs> <laughs> right, him. He's good. He's mad. He's great. I mean, you look at, uh, like you said, man, we're going to be sending some studs home uh, before things even get started. So, I mean, right now, you, you it's 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 a tragedy that that either you know Dake or Burroughs isn't going to be competing, but at, at the same time, like you said, man, it, it's it's 2021, and this is what USA Wrestling looks like, man. We're we're freaking growing. I mean, the I have I think that Burroughs, Dake, and Taylor are three of the best wrestlers to ever live. Period. Already, I'm saying that. So, I mean, ever. you you agree with that? Ever. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's an, and I mean, to have each other so close to each other's weight and to be so close, they seem to have a great relationship. The whole U S wrestling scene seems to have a great rapport with each other right now. Everybody's like kind of come together. You see Humphrey out there grinding with the guys, everybody's working together, but I think it's all, it all kind of started with flow, man. They all, they, they kind of got this thing whole off the ground and, um, and it's just been a beautiful thing to watch to develop. But on that note, Chael, I really, really appreciate you making the time for me, man. I know, uh, I know uh, you, you're a very busy guy, and I don't know how you keep up with with your regular life with all the content you got out there regularly. So thank you for squeezing me in. I don't, I don't find time. I make time. That's how I do it. And I appreciate those nice words. It was good talking to you. Oh, by the way, in the future, we're friends now. You don't have to get all dressed up for me like you did today. <laughs> no, just in the future, keep it casual. Just two guys talking. Two guys talking. Do your thing. I will be here for you. Keep up the good work. Thanks so much, Chill. Take care, Goodbye, man. Bye, turkey. <laughs>